and welcome to Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And today, Sean, we're going to do part two, I guess, of our cleaning our computer kind of campaign. Yes. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Last time uh, on the show, well, I mean, a few episodes back, we looked at cleaning the gunk out of your machine. You know, getting rid of the grit on the board and the stuff sitting around in the bottom of your uh, case. This time, we're going to look at a different way to uh, clean up the inside of your machine. Now, a lot of people have machines. You look inside them, and they're just like a rat's nest of cables. Mm -hmm. And um, and and this has a couple of bad effects on number one you can't figure out what is attached to what mm -hmm. number two it really impedes the airflow inside your machine and affects your cooling you can also do this if it's, you have nothing better to do with your Saturday if you uh, have no hobbies you're not married you live in a, your parents basement it's a great way to kill a Saturday morning it, it is at that <laughs> all right well no I, I get it you know better airflow you yeah. want optimized computers right yeah, it, it sounds almost like a joke, but it is actually a serious thing. You know, right. A lot of the times when I hear people have problems with the machines, you know, randomly shutting down, things are working improperly, like the video card looks like it's blanking. A lot of times it's just as simple as too much heat inside the case. Too much heat. Too much heat. And there's a few things that you can do to fix that up. It's very important, especially if you live in a house on the beach and it's really hot all the time. Yes. <laughs> okay. Enough of the jokes. Yes, let's, we all do. Let's show us how to do it. Let's just have a look at it. Okay, how, how so works. we're going to bring up a, a case here that may be familiar to you. Now it's a, a case that has a rat's nest of uh, cables here. Yes. And, uh, and it looks like it has some small woodland creatures in here as well. Frog. There's Mr. Frog. Mr. Frog. Biff. Mr. Frog. Biff. Mr. Frog. Frog. Biff. Mr. Frog. Biff. Give me Mr. Frog. Uh, Biff's uh, all frogged out at the moment. I know. So, but you can see that this is a huge mess. All of the cables are all over the place. Mr. Mouse. What's been going on inside here? <laughs> Nothing, Mr. Mouse. All right, so ideally what you want is you want to have airflow on this machine. So if, if the air stagnates yeah. inside, it just gathers heat inside. All the components will get overheated, which will lead to premature failure of the components inside. So if you've got uh, a hard drive that's all you know, mashed in against other hard drives. You've got uh, all of your cards wedged in against each other and cables blocking the way. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's one thing about having cats on set, it's like they get into everything. Anyway, thank you, Matt. We are trying to do a show over here, Ben. <laughs> all right. Uh, anyway, so, so you were saying, so what we want to do is optimize the airflow through this machine, right? So right. that we get uh, good cooling of the parts. And uh, because I guess it's not only the CPU you have to worry about failing, no. you want a hard drive failure if that heat gets too hot. The right. GPU, the graphics uh, processing adapter on the uh, uh, graphics processing unit yes. on your, you know, your uh, ATI card or your NVIDIA card or whatever yeah. card you happen to use. That is one of the biggest problems with anything inside a computer case is if it has electricity going through it, it will generate heat. Mm -hmm. And the more heat that is generated inside the case, the more problems it will be because the, the hotter it is inside the case, the shorter the lifetime of those components will be and it can actually cause them to fail really quickly. Right. Um, well, here's the issue too, right? Let's say you get a lot of heat in your machine uh, and you've got a very hot component. What's happening is the actual the material it's made of is expanding. Uh, you know, a great deal with heat, right? Metal will expand as, it, as it's warm. Um, and then you're going to flick it off at night, perhaps, and it's going to cool down again, and so you're going to get that contraction again. So what you're yeah. ending up getting is like this expansion, contraction, expansion, contraction. As, as we all know, when, you know, metal heats and cools, it gets fatigued, and ultimately, it's going to break. Kapow. Kapow. So, let, so what do we do? Okay, so for, there's a few things that are, before we get into the whole issue of cables, um, now it, a lot of times you'll see along the inside of your case, you've got a sp space for your hard drives, and a lot of times you'll put them in right next to each other. Mm -hmm. If you have space to move them and space them out, do it. Because if they're right in against each other, there's no place for the heat to dissipate. Okay, so yeah, so you see here, so here's the hard drive here. Are you talking about, there's a second um, slay or a slot for it there. Mm -hmm. If you have a third slide, you're saying keep the hard drives apart. Right, so put them in one and three, not one and two. Okay, there you go. And if you've got a third one, you can put it in there, but it's not necessarily the wisest choice. At, <laughs> at that point, you want to start actually uh, spreading things out and trying to find other ways to mount them inside. Okay. You see in this one, you've actually got one here and one here, and that's good because it actually keeps them apart, and the heat from the other hard drive isn't affecting, you know, one isn't affecting okay. two and vice versa. Good. So separation is good. Right, and uh, on the back side of the computer here, you've got all the cards going into the, uh, man, this is the noisiest episode <laughs> ever. All right, so on the back here, you may have 
up to five cards here. Yeah. If you don't have up to five cards, you may want to start spacing them out again. Now, yeah. providing that you're not going to run into issues with IRQs right. on that, because sometimes if you put it into the wrong slot, they won't work properly. Okay. Now we're uh, talking about PCI slots here, right? And right. I guess in the next generation machines, PCI Express slots. Right. And you may have an AGP slot here. You can't move the AGP card around, but right. if you've got a PCI card right next to it and you have spare slots down here, you may want to consider moving that down. You know what I recommend too is actually you know, getting rid of your fax modem. If you never make fax calls or you never use your dial-up modem on your machine that's sitting out of your desk, you know, take that redundant card out. Mm -hmm. There's no point in keeping it in that machine and it gives you more space, more airflow and that sort of thing. Yeah, and the right? same thing with things like serial cables. In, in older machines, you'll actually have a, a bracket on the back of the box here and then a little wire leading over to the motherboard. And, uh, you know, if you don't use that, just remove that entirely from your system. Take right. the, the panel off the back and remove the cable. Very good. Okay, good. Now, what do we do about all these cables then? Because there's zillions of cables all over the place. Because, of course, the power cable's in here. You have your uh, IDE cables down in here. I mean, is there a way to actually clean these up and make them more, uh, you know, easier to use? There is actually a way to fix up uh, this mess. First of all, we had one uh, viewer write in and ask us, you know, the, all of the pros do this thing where they tuck the cables in and, uh, you know, makes it really cool looking and, you know, yeah, you can do that. And that's not the only reason why you do that. Uh, you often see that in performance machines because what, what that will do is it'll take it out of the way of the other components and allow airflow. So the first thing, before we get into even cables, I want to talk about the, the cooling fans. Okay. Because uh, what you want to do is you ideally want air to come through your machine on one side of the case and exit on the other okay, side right, of sure. the case. Yeah. And uh, you can easily do that if you've got a space to mount it. This one doesn't uh, have a very good space to mount it, but I think in the back behind here, there may be a space you can mount another cooling fan okay. here. So you want to put one on the front and one on the back, and you want to orient them in the right direction. So you don't want them blo both blowing in, like... You don't want them both <laughs> blowing in or both blowing out, because okay. then they'll be fighting each other. Okay. What you want to do is you want to make sure that, you, you can generally orient them by the label side, make sure that they're both going in the same direction, okay. so yeah. it'll pull in this way and out this way, which will pull it across the components, okay. and then out through the back. So what do these guys plug in? There's looks like little connectors here, so where do they go? Right, th these little uh, dongles right here are designed to attach to the motherboard. So if you've got a newer motherboard, you may see a little three pin connector uh -huh. here that this will connect to. And uh, I'll try to take a photograph and splash it right here okay. that shows you what that pin looks like. Right. Um, often when you get the fans, you'll have a little adapter here that uh, you can stick on and then it will attach directly to your All right, regular so yeah. Molex power connectors. Right, which, will, which is a power source, okay, that makes sense. Right, and so some of them will come with that directly. So you want to make sure that you get one that has the proper connectors, either for the motherboard or for the regular power supply. All right. So once and you what, do these, what do these run? What does something like this cost you? Now it depends what kind you go. I got these for uh, $5.97 a piece. They may not be the best ones in the entire world at that price. They'll do the job for the purposes of this, but you know, when you go in for something a bit more expensive, they'll be quieter because they'll have better bearings. So five bucks or so, American, Canadian, whatever. Uh, yeah, so about, something like that. You can get them for Australian. up to like thirty dollars, and those will be like really super quiet. Okay. So it depends how much uh, noise you're willing to uh, tolerate. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, well, you almost so. hit the cat. <laughs> All right. So now we've got cables here. Yeah. Now so you this see, is your IDE cables? This is an IDE cable, right. and we've got a floppy cable in here as well. And you notice that these right here are all just sort of drifting in behind here. And uh, you know, a lot of cases, they'll be blocking the airflow from front to back. Yeah. Yeah. So ideally, what you want to do is you want to tuck them away. Now you'll okay. see in some high performance cases, they've taken these things and they've just folded them like that and then hidden them around behind other components. Mm -hmm. Now you can do that. It always it makes yeah, me a little bit wary. Don't worry about that, yeah, because you're going to end up getting kind of fatigued eventually, aren't you? Yeah, so the you thing, can, over you can, time? You can break the traces inside there and, you know, you might start to lose data. But you can do that within a certain tolerance. Okay. Um, one other solution we've got. Makes a nice belt. It does make a nice belt. Choker? Fashion with lab rats. <laughs> There's a new uh, kind of cable here mm -hmm. that uh, you can use that actually takes those cables and separates them up. These right here are all glued together, basically, with the, uh, the plastic. Okay. So what it's doing is basically stripping these guys out from the flat ribbon and right. putting it into one... one They're putting them into thing. one tiny thing. So it, it saves space. It's more like a serial ATA cable. Why don't they just come up with this in the first place? Why don't they, you know, why don't the manufacturers go, well, this is a dumb design idea. Let's uh, do this. I don't know. Okay. All right. Well, but the yes. so what do these run? These run about what? Uh, again, it depends on on the kind of quality level. I got these for about uh, six to ten dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, if you want to get some that are really you know like the monster cable of uh, 
of floppy and uh, IDE cables, you yeah. know, you can run 30, 30. upwards. Right. Okay. So, you know, it depends how much you want to spend on it. All right. And again, you'll just replace the ones that are in there, and then you, it's, it's a lot less width across. It won't block it as much. Now, we're going to take this one down because yeah. we've already groomed another machine down here. Just like a cooking show presto change -o. Look at this. Oh, so beautiful, everybody. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you. A miracle of IPTV. Yeah. And so well, the other thing about this is that you've got a bunch of power cables in there. You can tuck those away. There's generally a lot of crannies in behind here. Yeah. And uh, crannies. Crannies, crannies and grannies. Crannies. Oh, I love these things. Crevice tool, crannies. It's also dirty. Yeah. So you can generally tuck your cables in behind uh, these little slots. There's often little spaces that you can do that. If there's a spare bay in here, you can tuck them in there and keep okay. it away. Uh, you don't want to jam it in too much because then you're not uh, allowing airflow properly again. Okay. So, but if, if there's enough of a space inside there, then you can tuck a little bit of a cable in there to prevent it from blocking it behind there so the right. air can flow right through. All right, we only have a few minutes left, so any final, uh, final words? Um, I mean, I'm gathering your, your apartment is extremely tidy as well. No, it's not, actually. <laughs> and, uh, and, and you have no spare time on Saturday mornings. I have no spare time at all. <laughs> but you know, it, and this isn't for everyone. If you're having no problems with your machine, you may not need to do something like this. Yeah. If you're having mysterious reboots, yeah. heat may be an issue. Yeah. And then there's, like I said, it's worth taking a look at a few of these things, because a lot of them are free. Just moving the cables off to the back and moving a car down. That costs you nothing to try. Very cool. Unless you really mess it up and you have to take it into the shop, you know? Very good. Well, thank you, Sean. That's uh, it's kind of cool. I don't think my, my computer will ever look like that inside. I'm just way too disorganized. But uh, for those of you who have the time and the patience and the uh, money for the $6 cable. Yeah, we still have a floppy in there. While you're uh, taking this out, I'll fix this last one up. Oh, yeah, we're very good. Okay, well, that's it for us this week. Um, we uh, Do we have a use for this fan, by the way? Oh, yeah. Oh. I mean, that... We're going to say that this is not necessarily the best way to cool your PC, taking the side off and doing this, but you know what? If you have to, it'll work. <laughs> <laughs> that was the point of the prop? Oh, my God. Anyway, that's it for us this week. Uh, as, as always, we love to hear from you. From uh, <laughs> It's a little dirty, isn't it? Uh, feedback at labrats.tv is our uh, email address. And um, our website's labrats.tv. That's where you got this, uh, this show from in the first place. Um, for Sean Carruthers, this gentleman over here, and for me, that's it for this week. Uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for downloading. Are you ready? talking proper English. English? Good. Yes, and, good. Uh, and then we're going to talk about, uh, a couple of weeks ago we uh, talked about how to clean the inside of your PC. Right. And uh, this time we're going to go a little bit further and uh, clean up the cabling and clean up the airflow inside your machine to make sure that everything goes through properly. Oh right, yeah, because I mean it's usually we've got a complete spaghetti of uh, wires in there and there's, you know, small insects and dust bunnies and leftover hamsters and things like that, right? So. Well, I always have a ton of hamsters in the, in the bottom of my case, but that's just because that's the kind of guy I am. That's right.